our doors are, it's just, there's utter frustration, I think, really is what, there's a huge sense of frustration, mm-hmm. a huge sense of just not being able to, um, not knowing whether you're coming or going, not being able to plan. Then when you do finally plan and then you get in a little bit of momentum and you get, yeah, great. And then, no, you're not doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, like we would usually have about 120 to 130 events of, of actually people in the building at something um, between March and December. Uh, and this year we've had four, four mm-hmm. events where we've had an audience in either watching a film or watching a performance on stage. Um, you know, like... <sighs> I'm even trying to remember what photograph did I send you? I think it was the one of the um, the building coming up from coming up from the end of the mall. Isn't that it? Yeah, what really it. struck me about it, Emma, was the sense of loss. <laughs> well, do you know what? For me, Rowena, it's the lo- it was the loneliness, and it still is. There's, um, I have to say, April and May was just horrendous. There was a set on stage that was empty, in an empty auditorium. I came in here on my own. There was no staff in here. There was nothing happening. Um, and but yet there was a mountain of work and li- to, to be done by way of we had about 1100 tickets that had been sold for a number of events. There had been um, there was all that work to deal with rescheduling or refunding or cancelling and and then all of this, you know, and I suppose the first thing in April, things got moved into July and then it was realised, well, actually, you know what, it's not going to work in July either. So then, you know, people started scheduling things for October and now that's not happening. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the over, I, I think certainly for me, the over, the biggest emotion that I felt has been loneliness. It's just the, the no customers coming in, nothing happening. Um, and, you know, there was times I'd be here and I'd be like, I heard something. I heard something. Like uh, me and the ghosts, we got really acquainted. Really did because, oh my goodness! I think every time a car drove up the mall, it probably shook the whole building, and I fi- it's felt like I heard footsteps coming across the auditorium. Um, and and I think then the photograph, it's empty. The street is empty, but yet the beautiful building, it just stands there majestically. Here I am, just I just here on my own as well you know um and and i you know this time around um we've worked things slightly differently in the building in that there's there's still a, we still have a good bit of work to do we had hullabaloo we were running and that was that ran um during the midterm break so um staff are either working remotely we're in touch with each other a lot more um or some staff are staggering they're coming in um on sunday some days so there is a bit of there's a bit of movement there's other life in the building which is really important to have you know um and i think that's kind of what um stands out for me more so than anything is that it's not as I don't know how the word is. It's just not as it's difficult this time as it was in April and May. April and May was horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. I remember walking by the theatre and just taking a photo of the big padlock on the gate. Yeah. And that was so yeah. sad to see that. Oh, horrendous. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous. You know, but I mean, when you walked inside and to see a set of it was like the um what was the, the what was the um the boat the, the Mary Celeste which was it the Mary Celeste which one was the, yeah it was like the whole thing was abandoned the set was still there on stage um and it was you know it was probably the end of May by the time we were able to coordinate and get people in to actually you know safely be allowed to to get in and to get it removed you know um but there was and and even that Rowena the removal of that set really was like the nail in the coffin that because there was such hope around oh we'll get back in we'll get back in you know we'll push it into july we'll push it into september it it, we do it for vintage week do you know what i mean there was there was a level of hope all along and then eventually was you know what we're actually going to have to admit defeat here this is not happening and now that set was for the hired man um and it 
then we had planned, right, we postponed everything till next March. But unfortunately, now in the last, you know, six weeks, the Guild had to make that decision. Well, you know what, that's not going to happen either, because you, you can't have 30 people on stage. You can't actually have them rehearsing all of that. You know, if you're to have 50 people in an auditorium and 30 of them are on stage, you've only left with 20. <laughs> then you have an orchestra, so you're left with an audience of about 10. You know? <laughs> so really, it's not on. It's not going to happen, you know. So for 2021, the plan is that we're looking at a hybrid of live or and and online events, um, and in, you know if there is an event that we are preparing, well, like I, I'm thinking even for scripts, for example, in July, where I'm just literally after doing the funding application for that, so that's fresh in my mind. Um, but definitely, we will be looking at planning a live event and live activities, but always have a backup plan of, right, well, if we get a lockdown, if we go into a different level, because we need level two, and that, you know, to have 50 people level two. So, but, you know, what, what bothers me about that is we have the most beautiful exhibition hanging in the in the foyer, and those doors are closed, and our footfall is that not that massive. Our footfall might be one or two people an hour, you know, as people pass by or, you know, there's never, never, even like in, we, you'd never have loads of people in to see the exhibition at the one time. There's like a steady foot, foot, footfall throughout a day uh, or throughout the week, you know. Um, so at, at one stage, I think, was it in July, there was talk about, um, the levels and the numbers of, I can't even remember what that was. There was a, a thing in relation to the the number of people you were allowed in, in the building at any one time, you know, and there was the different levels. I think there was a difference between 50 and 100 or something, depending on the level that you were at. But at that stage, we didn't even have 50 people in throughout the whole week. Whereas, you know, literally across the whole week, we didn't between the footfaller coming into the exhibition or maybe whatever class, or there could have been a yoga class on or something like that. Um, but yet restaurants and cafes were turning that over in an afternoon. And really, I, I don't, I, I, I struggle with the logic of having our, our front doors closed. I can completely understand not having people, 50 people come in and sit for an hour and a half to watch something. Um, but certainly to be able to come in to see the exhibition, there makes no sense not to be able to do that. So with that in mind, then we are looking next year at having a little bit more external community engagement in our programming, which we probably should have been doing anyway, Rowena, you know, only I, I, I find certainly we were we were on this hamster wheel of like, OK, do it, do it, do it, do it. You know, in the last month, I've finally had an opportunity to actually think and you know the, oh well maybe we could do it this way or you know there is a, the, the hamster wheel has slowed down yeah. thankfully in it that that is it, it is it, and it needed to slow down because it was kind of getting out of hand anyway um so i think i you know i i hope and we we we're going to use this opportunity positively to recalibrate and rethink and just examine, okay, what do we do? How can we do it differently? So we can't have our audience coming in the door. So how do we get out to our audience? So but different community engagement projects um, over the next 12 months, that's the way we're going to do it. And to create a presence and people just still be aware that we are here. Um, but I certainly do look forward to being able to have full houses again and, mm -hmm. and you know, see an audience in. Because just the enjoyment everybody gets when they come to an event and, and you know, it's an, I think people need that as well. They need that escape away from the crazy, you know. Um, I think audiences are going to be very, very slow to be getting into gatherings. But I think we also have a responsibility to demonstrate, well, you know, we are actually following protocol. We have clear lines and, and we not, might need to be 
you know, we will need to be really strong and clear. So you must book in advance. You can't just walk up, you know. I mean, there was one over this year already when we had one event, you know, some, somebody or one or two people arrived and just walked up and I said, do you have a booking? No, 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 but it's okay. I'll sit wherever. It's like, well, actually, that's the point. You can't. So bear with us while I, I do have space, but just bear with us while we figure out where we're going to put you, you know, that sort of way. Um, because you know, if we don't know if somebody's coming up in ones or twos or threes, well, that has a whole knock on effect to the whole layout of how things. So advanced booking is going to be the thing, you know, so we need to know exactly who's coming, how many in the party. And once we have that information, then we can safely allocate seats and make sure everybody is safe, you know. But, you know, I think um, I think the audience who who start venturing out from the start i think they i expect they're they're going to play by the rules and they're going to because they really want to be there and they want it to work you know um so they, we yeah yeah and we all want it to work so let's hope i i think this providing free arts online is to stop that's not acceptable and i i'm you know so pay-per-view and that's the way it's going to work because uh, we all can't be working for free artists can't work for free the venue can't work for free we have to generate income and um, so that's the only way we can do it and that wouldn't you know affected of any other profession would it no and it's continuing absolutely not way, but it's seen as acceptable and it's really isn't yeah, it is. It is seen as acceptable. And, you know, I. but I also think the artists might be a victim of, or they might be, they're not a victim, they might be a catalyst to that as well. Because for their own solace, you know, they want to perform. Mm -hmm. So they will do it for free instead of not do it at all. Yeah, so, and, and I can completely understand that, you know, of course do it anyway um but then unfortunately then it becomes expected and accepted that you don't you know oh you don't you do it for free you know you know and people don't you don't you know you don't put food on the table from exposure so you know that's not on oh this time next year oh rowena i uh, yeah. not going to be naive I think maybe this time 18 months maybe could we get back out of it um I don't know will we be will we you know once a vaccine is is generated that's going to take a massive amount of time to roll out and just because a vaccine exists doesn't mean that a virus doesn't spread it's it's still as contagious you know so it's going to be slow um I would like to see us I would like to see us with with a big light at the end of the tunnel that we know the direction and we're, we're coming out of it. Um, and 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 do we ever come out of it? I mean, who kind what of living with this, this it? You know, um, I look forward to being able to shake somebody's hand, to being able to greet someone with a hug if I haven't seen them for a long time. Um, you know, that just simple little things but I think we're a very tactile and social being that really this um you know not being able to do that is really really difficult it completely goes against the the um just the norm yeah it was funny actually I'm trying to think was I having a dream yesterday did I meet somebody I must have dreamt that I was meeting so I think I dreamt I was meeting somebody and I had to be really conscious not to shake their hand it's like no do you know what it was I was sympathizing with a neighbor who had lost lost um, a family member and I was like really like oh my how do I how do you not you know um yeah it's or somebody calls to your door how do you not invite them in <laughs> you know like weird <laughs> what's wrong with them <laughs> Yeah, um, I think um, I think Rowena, when we come out of this, I, I have to say when we come out of it, I have to be positive that this is going to end. This is going to be a past mm -hmm. and we will look back at this as an experience and use it to prepare for our futures like the world over globally. Um, but I would like to think that, you know, we won't take things for granted and we will 
have a different attitude towards each other and that we in general you know that we that we're more um and 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 that we just become better people because of it you know what with all the festivals the funny thing is so we the first festival to be hit was a birth festival festival of music that was to happen over the maybank holiday weekend so that got kicked into the summer and then with a hope that we would have maybe a live broadcast but with an audience and broadcast it but that didn't that didn't happen so we had a that at that we were about to have an event on the Sunday. So lockdown happened, I think, on Friday, Thursday or Friday. I was in Sligo, actually, it was Friday. Um, and lockdown happened. And so we had to just do a recording behind closed doors with no audience. But but like that, the it, it was always the attitude was, we're doing it. We're mm-hmm. actually having it. So whatever version of, we'll create a version of what we have. Um, so that that got hit at the same time that Vintage Week was just about to start as well the following week. Um, so all of that had to be postponed and cancelled and changed. Um, Scripps actually was not planned to have a festival in 2020 because we had Scripps in 19 in November due to personnel's maternity leaves and, and actually the access to more volunteers and whatever. So at such short notice. So we had... And, we went ahead to the 2019 festival because there was a commitment from funders from public funders uh, money was committed to already so we didn't want to mess that up so what we said was we'll go ahead to 2019 and then we skipped 2020 however it was the first thing we did once lockdown came was it did the the whole mentoring the whole writing festival all the, the mentoring element and the performance all happened online the whole thing and we had a great engagement for it really surprised it all happened at the end of may so that was sh- shocked that, that happened um then with offline and hullabaloo the level three lockdown was announced the day before offline was to start oh my god um you know you want a lockdown we'll organize a festival and you're guaranteed you'll have one um so <laughs> it was to happen then. So we spent the day before moving offline from a hybrid of uh, on in, in the room and streaming to uh, everything streaming. And at the same time, we were about to go print. I think we're, we were nearly at print and at design. We were finalizing the program for Hullabaloo for a live live program so that all had to stop right move everything online um so (laughs) it's just kind of crazy it really was crazy um but really it has i have to say it has really challenged the the norm of you know getting on with things but oh god constantly firefighting and having to react and, and okay we we'll figure out another way of doing it right uh, and what if and what if and what if you know and everything took a conversation opening a door took a conversation who touched the door how did it, you know all of this cleaning protocol that we have been going on inside the, in, as well it just we you know sometimes we're like oh i just want to do it do we can we just do something and not have a conversation about it <laughs> And I think if somebody, you know, somebody's anyway we shy or or maybe not as not as confident as others, mm-hmm. they're going to really struggle. Yeah. They're going to need the arts and art to they help are. them get back out of there. Look at all we can do is live where keep going. There will be light. It's kind of that tiny at the minute, but eventually it'll be bigger and we'll see it. And uh we will, I, you know, I have to believe we're going to come out the other end of this. That is the only thing probably that's keeping me going. Yeah. So we will, it, we will come out. Mm-hmm.